Hello and welcome to this lecture. In the previous lecture, you learned how a singly linked list works and in this lecture, you will implement a program in Python that creates a singly linked list. Let's get started by opening a text editor. So once we are there, let's save this file as a Python file. Let me call it as singly linked list.py. Now before we get started with the execution of the program, let's first list down the steps which we will be following. So first we need to create nodes and then we need to create linked list and then we need to add nodes to linked list and finally we need to print linked list. So in order to create nodes, we'll have a class called node. Let's leave it empty for now. We'll just come back later and fill things up. And to create a linked list, we will have a class called linked list. Let's leave this one empty as well. So let's now start by creating nodes. Now every node will have a data field and a next field. Data field is the data which we wish to store and next is the pointer which points to the next node. So let's create an object for our node class. Let me just call it first node. And by making use of the class node, I'm creating an object. At the time of creation of the object, I pass the data field. The data which I wish to store is the name John. So now when we create an object, we need to have an init method that initializes the data field and the next field for us. So let's go back to our node class and write an init method here. So that would be to write this method init, which accepts the data which we pass. So let's initialize the data part of our first node. So that would be self dot data with the data which we have received as the parameter. And since the next pointer points to nowhere initially, we assign it to type none. Now, in case you're having any confusion regarding how to create classes and objects or what the self parameter is all about, I highly recommend that you stop this course here. Go back to my free course, which is titled Four Pillars of Open Python 3, which explains all of these concepts in details, go through all of them and then come back to this course. And if you have any confusion regarding why this indentation is required or how to write functions and things like that, you could check out my free course, which is titled Hands-On Introduction to Python 3 for Beginners. All right, so let's continue. So this is how our first node would now look like. Your first node dot data will have John. Oh, let me just add this up as a comment. And then your first node dot next will point to none. So now that we have created a node for our linked list, let's add this node to our linked list. Now in order to add this node to our linked list, let's first create a linked list. So let me use an object called linked list which will be an object of the class linked list. I'm differentiating both the object and the class with this lowercase l. So once we do that, we need not pass any initial parameter to this linked list class like how we did for the node class. And that's because our linked list is initially empty. And when our linked list is initially empty, we need to make sure that the head of our linked list is none. So how do we do that? We create an init method for it. So let's go back to our linked list class, have an init method, and in the init method, we assign the head to none. So once we're done with that, we need to insert our first node into this linked list. So our linked list class could have an insert method, which will insert this node. So let's go back to our linked list class and have a method called insert. Now this insert method will take in the new node, which we are trying to insert. So initially when we try to insert a new node into our linked list, we first need to check if the head of our linked list is empty. If the head of the linked list is empty, we need to make this new node as our head node. So how do we do that? We make an if condition to check if the self dot head is none. And if it is none, we make this new node as the head node. So that would be self dot head equal to new node. So we now have our linked list as head node, which is John. And the next of John points to none. So now let's create a second node for our linked list. So this time let me create it with the data Ben. And then similar to our first node, let's insert this one to our linked list class as well. So that would be linked list.insert. This time we pass in the second node. So now when we go to our insert method of our linked list, this if condition check fails because our self.head is already John and it is not none. So we could have an else condition now we see that the next of John points to none. So we could assign self dot head dot next as the new node. But then this is not the ideal solution which we should be following and you will shortly see why. So our linked list now looks like this with the head node as John, 
the next of John which points to Ben and the next of Ben which points to none. So now let's create a third node. Let me create this node with the data Matthew. And now we insert Matthew into this linked list. So now when we go back to our insert method in the else condition, we already have the next of John pointing to Ben. But what we do in this step is we assign self.head.next to new node. So what will in turn happen is John will point to Matthew, which is not what we want. We want John to point to Ben and the next of Ben to point to Matthew. So this is not the ideal solution and we need to have a generalized solution for every node which we create. If we look at the pattern here, Ben is the last node of this linked list and the next of Ben points to none. So always the next of our last node points to none. So we need to break that connection between the next of our last node and make the next of our last node point to our new node. So we break the connection from the next of Ben which is pointing to none and we establish a connection from the next of Ben to the new node which is Matthew. Let's see how to do that. So we need to traverse the list from the start till the end to identify the last node. So let's have a node, let me just call it last node, which starts from the first node. And we could get rid of this statement now. Now what we want to do is to arrive at the last node of our linked list. So let's have a while loop. And within the while loop, we check if the last node dot next is none. If the last node dot next is none, it means that's your last node and you're free to break the while loop. But if the next of your last node is not none, let's take the example of this one. Now we started from the head node, which is John. The next of John points to Ben. So this if condition fails. When this if condition fails, we need to advance to the next node, which is Ben. So in that case, you could advance this last node to your next node. So that would be last node, which is initially John. And now we are advancing it to Ben as last node dot next. Now the next of John contains Ben and now your last node becomes Ben. So next time when the while loop repeats, your last node will contain the data Ben and the next of Ben points to none. Now this is your last node and you're breaking from the while loop. So once your while loop breaks, you are at the last node and next thing what we need to do is break the connection from the last node dot next as none to last node dot next as your new node. So all that we have to do is last node dot next becomes your new node and that completes it. So now that we have completed insertion in our singly linked list, let's create a new method to print the data in our linked list. So let me just call it as print list. We want this method to print the data part of each node starting from the first node till the last node. This is how our linked list now looks like with John as the head node, the next of John pointing to Ben and the next of Ben pointing to Matthew. So we first start with the head node and we print the data part of a head node, which is John and we advance to the next node, which is Ben. We print Ben, we advance to the next node and we print Matthew. And when we advance to the next of Matthew, we see that it is none and we want to stop there. So we could have a current node, which initially points to the head node and we print the data part at the current node. Now, once we print the data part at the current node, our current node advances to the next node. So that would be cu your current node changes to your current node dot next. Now this needs to be a part of your while loop. So let me have a while loop. So we are printing the data at each node. So we first start with the head node. We print the data at the head node. We advance to the second node, which is Ben. We print the data at Ben. We advance to the third node, Matthew. We print the data Matthew. And then the next of Matthew points to none. So when your current node is none, you need to break the loop. So if your current node is none, then you break the loop. And that completes your print list. So now let's call this print list method and then execute this program to see if it works as expected. So that would be linked list dot print list. And to execute this program, let's first save this and then open our terminal from the atom editor. So to execute this program, it will be Python three space your file name dot py, which is singly linked list dot py is the file name. Now, if you are on a windows machine, you need to use py space the file name for Mac and Linux users. You can use Python three space the file name. Now on executing this, we see that we have our linked list. We start with the first node, which is John. We print it the second node, Ben and the third node, Matthew. 
So now let's go back to our program and make a small change. What happens when our singly linked list is empty? Let's see what happens. So let me remove all of these insert statements. Let me just comment them out. So now we are trying to print an empty singly linked list. So let's save this file. Let's go back to our terminal. So now when you execute it, it's an empty list and the user doesn't get any message. So we want to make sure that the user gets a message that says the list is empty. So we need to make a check in our print list if our head is none. So if your self dot head is none, then we need to print a statement that says list is empty. And then since we no longer need to continue to the other steps, you can just return from this function. So now let's save it once again and open our terminal. So now when we print it, we get this message that says the list is empty. We've learned quite a lot of concepts in this program. Let's just go back to our program and make sure that we understand everything that's happening. So we started by creating a class called node and each node will have two fields, the data field and the next field. So at the time of creation of your node, you pass in the data field and you assign it to that particular object. And the next is being pointed to none since it points nowhere. And then we created a linked list class and initially we make the head point to none. And then in the insert method, we first check if the head is empty. If the head is empty, we make the new node as our head node. Now, if the head is not empty, then we need to advance to the last node of our linked list. The last node is identified by the last node of your next being none. So until we reach the last node of next is none, we advance all the way through all the other nodes starting from our head node. And once we reach the last node, we break the loop. So now that we are at the last node, we break this connection from the last node dot next to none to your last node dot next to your new node. And once that's done, we move to the print list method. And in the print list method, our aim was to print all the data fields of your nodes starting from the head node till the last node. So we start from the head node, which is the value John, and then we print it and we advance to the next node. So to get this through, we make use of a node called current node, which starts from the head node. And within a while loop, we print the data and we advance to the next node. And once our current node has the value none in it, it means that's the last node and then we are free to break the loop. So that's the end of this lecture. You now have an understanding of what a singly linked list is and how to write a singly linked list in Python. If you have any questions, do post them in the Q&A section and I'll help you from there. In this lecture, you've learned how to add a new node at the end of the list. I'll see you in the next lecture where you will learn how to add a new node at the beginning of the list. Thank you.